Well, hello there, shrimp lads. Welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video, hmm, we'll mostly be drinking coffee, right? It's a Monday morning for me, right? And you guys know that I've started to film in this format of filming things I do through the week and then we post all of our content at the weekend for you guys to view, right? So in today's video, what I do have planned is uh, we had leaves soaking that we must add to the tank. Let me quickly grab them because, yeah, I want to add them into the tank. They've been in here for quite a few days. And we're also going to be uh, topping up the tanks because the tanks do need topped up a little bit. They are a wee bit low. And I'm going to share something with you as well that I've been doing to stabilize our pH in our tanks. When I'm doing water changes, it's simply by adding a few drops of acid to the tank. Yes, you heard that right. It's by adding a few drops of acid to the tank. Um, I have stuff that I've ordered. This All this information, by the way, came from a friend that's a really, really good shrimp breeder. Thank you, Raymond. <coughs> Thank you very much. Happy birthday, by the way, if you're watching this. Um, so we're going to do that today as well. There is another experiment that I'm doing over there with my water barrel, and it's in a, with a little bit more uh, powerful acid. And guys, my goal is this. I want to be able to change water in my tanks and match the parameters of the tank exactly from now on. So this is the goal I'm trying to do over there. And what I mean by that, guys, is when you do acid adjustments in a tank, what it always happens is the acid will, the pH will go down, right? And then there will be a rebound, and then you have to try and adjust that again. So I don't want to do all of that in the tank. I want to try and figure this out um, on paper and then for us to look at results over, say, a few weeks. Using that water barrel there, it's about 100 litres of water that's in it already. And I think that'll give us a good idea how long the acid is stable in the water before we need to add a little bit more acid to it. And by the way, I know I kind of sound like a mumbling here, but what I mean in general is we want the, the acid, the pH in the tank to hit a certain pH. Right? for me is between 5.5 and 5.8 something like that right and like 5.8 would be my higher limit 5.5 would be my lower limit and with us doing this uh, testing my goal is to get the end result below 5.8 because then we're good to go and then, but then once we know the amount of acid that we have to add to our water change barrel because that's all this one is going to be for is water changes uh, then we'll be able to know how much acid to add to the tank exactly. Right, so we're going to go through that today as well. Um, I do have another type of acid that I, I use for the actual tanks themselves. And guys, if you use any of these products, I'll share them with you as well. If you use any of them, be very, very careful because if you add too much acid, you can have quite a catastrophic pH drop rate. So um, don't even hold too much acid over the tank because if you accidentally put too much in or something like that you will you risk killing your tank right so yeah be, please 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 be very careful when you're handling stuff that could potentially kill your shrimp and by, by the way by, guys as well I, I'd go as far as saying yeah be very careful when you're handling it as well because I do think that these products probably can contain hydrochloric acid which uh, can actually burn you so yeah please be very careful Let's go on with it, right? Let's do the leaves first. And by the way, guys, this is just for our one day today, this little segment here, right? So we'll have another segment tomorrow or the next day. And the goal by the end of the week, guys, is to get that bloody tank outside resealed and set up somewhere in the house, right? So let's uh, let's stop blathering more coffee and uh, let's get into it. All right, guys, so here is our leaf litter. Let me show you what this is. These are walnut leaves and you can see how tannic they make the water go and I like to soak these for a few days because I don't like my water going too tannic, I don't like it being too brown and then yeah we add our leaves to the tank. So a good rule of thumb guys is to always have enough leaves in the tank in different stages of decomposition uh, that your shrimp can munch on them through right so yeah let's add them to that tank over here to start with because it doesn't have very much leaves at all. Alright shrimp, let's, let's add some to this tank eh, because yeah, this tank actually has babies and there is a, quite a bit of lack of uh, leaves. So let's put a few in at a time. And I'm only going to put in two or three per tank in the beginning and then we can see what we have left over for the end right? And uh, yeah, baby shrimp and stuff. You see these shrimp going crazy for it, watch. You see it? It's their absolute favourite walnut leaves. 
and these guys are always ravenous as well. By the way guys, I do apologise for the glare, I've actually ordered a polarising lens for this, so yeah, it won't be too much longer that we have to put up with all this glare you see in the background and stuff. Let's go on to the other tanks. We're going to put some in these tanks here, but before we do... Lucy, who's this? Lucy, Lucy, where are you going? Get back here. What are you doing in this room? room? <laughs> All right, guys. Let me start fire through all these tanks because you have a film every single one. We're going to be here forever. So as I said, the goal is just to put a few in each tank in the beginning, and then we're going to go back over the tanks if I have extra. All right, so let's do that now. All right, I think that is a good place for you to see me doing stuff. I know Lucy, because then you can see, you'll probably see Lucy on the floor there, wandering around. And I'm not going to put any of these leaves in the neo tanks because I've noticed that they really don't eat them as much as the bee shrimp. And it's probably because we feed the neo carinina tanks uh, with powdered foods. Right, so they're not as ravenous with leaves as these guys. Right? Remember the other day we said we didn't have enough leaves in this tank? There's literally none near the front and I did notice there was quite a bit of baby shrimp it's the same with this tank here there is quite a bit of baby shrimp but there isn't so much leaves which is an issue so we need to get these leaves in pronto now I'm going to add some to our new tank as well here because yeah we'll add shrimp to this sooner or later maybe in a few weeks you see I'm just going to add some handfuls in all the tanks and Lucy wants to smell this. You want to smell some of these leaves, but Lucy likes to eat walnuts, don't you, Lucy? <laughs> Alright guys, I'll just put this in and I'll be back in a second to talk to you. So this is what normally happens when you put leaves into the tanks. The shrimp all come out and, and uh, they want to see what we've added. So these leaves will they'll have probably some biofilm in them because we've been letting them soak for a few days. But um, over time the shrimp will eat these down to absolutely nothing. And you can see guys how far down I let them go. Right? So it's not a good idea to let them go down that far because yeah, then the baby shrimp start to struggle a little bit. So yeah, keep leaves in your tanks at all times. Okay, let's go over a few tanks so you can see what I mean. This tank had very, very little leaves. Look at the shrimp, they're all over the leaves. Same with this one. Shrimp are all over the leaves, right? They're very inquisitive when you put new stuff into the tank. Same with this one. Are you getting the picture here? So it shows you how bare my tanks were before. I have to remember and put leaves in. Leaves, lots and lots of leaves. I'll try and go slow so the camera looks okay. More shrimp on leaves. More shrimp on leaves. And much more shrimp on leaves. Alright guys, let's talk about the acid buffers that we're going to use. Mm. Ah, coffee is the best thing ever. Let's talk about the acid buffer that we use. We're going to talk about the stuff that we use in the RO treatment first. And then we'll talk about the stuff that we use directly into the tank because there are two different products here, right? And I'm not selling you anything here, so if you ask me via email or something like that, I'll probably put you in, in a way and contact in the way to get this stuff. but. I won't leave a link in the description because yeah, I don't want to come across as a channel that's trying to sell you something all the time. So let's have a look at the products. Because right, I only, guys, I only want to show you stuff that I actually f use myself in the shrimp room to help me breed shrimp. Right? So one of the ones is this oak leaf extract here. Right? And this is one of the ones that we use to treat the water. Um, as you're adding it to the tank. Right, this one is a little bit slightly weaker than this one here. Right? So this is set up pH down and I think this is hydrochloric acid this one and I think it's a quite a bit stronger than the oak one. I think this one also can, contains hydrochloric acid but it's just not as a strong a dose. Right? So for example my water in my tanks um, is a little bit low right? so we're going to actually top them up and we'll use some of this. Let's actually do that, right? And see, instead of me just sitting here telling you what I'm going to do, I'll do it, then you can see what we need to do. Let's uh, get over here, let's pick some tanks, because these ones all need topped up over here. All right, guys, we are going to top up our tank tree. I have a switch away over here in the wall that I have to turn on to allow me to top up the tanks. 
um, because I actually prefer, as you guys know, to do most of this stuff manually because of my back. So that's why I don't have a lot of float valves all over the place in my shrimp room. I just I just do this way, right? So it is what it is. Yeah, and I think this is overly long <laughs> for our application. And so these have little notches on them. And I always set them to two when I'm in the room. Yeah, both on two. And then guys, we simply just put them onto the tank like this. This one was fully screwed out. I'll pick you up in a second so you can see what we're doing a little bit better. I probably should do this as a test here actually. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the water. The water is not on here yet. Right, let me grab a pipette and we'll actually talk about this in more in detail. Alright guys, we're, right. we're going to get a base number here of our pH before we top up the tank because I want to show you guys that there is actually a difference. So let's pick a tank here, let's pick the far away one. Right, and we're going to add our pH meter to it here. This is a little tip I got from a friend called Ramon. He's probably watching my videos right now. <laughs> right, so you put the probe in. And we're going to switch it on. Right, and this will give me the pH of the tank. Now I expect this pH in this tank to be quite low because this is a newer tank. Right, so the newer your substrate is, the lower the pH will be. And it makes sense that the more water changes you do, the higher your pH eventually gets because you're stripping the water of the acids required to keep the pH low. And so when, uh, when we add our stuff to the tanks like this, it's, uh, it's important that we see how much we're adding to the tank and the rebound effect because there always is a rebound effect. Maybe this is not the best tank to actually show you this one because the pH in this tank is 5.8. Uh, 4.8 which is quite low and so normally that's normal by the way guys it's normal by the way to have pH that low with an uh, ADA Amazonia V1 type soil right and it's nothing to worry about with the shrimp as long as you acclimate them properly that's why drip acclimation is, is important um, but we'll see right we're going to turn on the water here did I turn it on over there yes I did right so we'll turn on the water here you see it flowing in and you know, we'll come back in, I don't know, say half an hour once it's filled up and we'll see if there was a difference, okay, between us putting in pure RO because this is from my mains, this stuff here. This is going straight from the mains. I'm saying mains. I have, I basically have well water here. There is a well that's next to a river. So our water is very, very, it's very clean, kind of. Like if you had to test it, it's like really, really clean. Um, but it's still not clean enough for me to put straight into the tank so I pump mines through my reverse osmosis system and then this water here goes straight into the tank. So the, the reason guys I did it this way was because I wanted a system where I'm not storing um, water that's just for top ups because I think there can be issues with bacteria when you do it that way. Like, like for example if I, if I top up a container, just say I get a container up here right, and, I, and I topped it up Right, and then I forgot about it for two weeks. Do you think the bacteria in the water is going to be the same or less than it was the, in the beginning when we first put water into the tank? I think it's going to be more. Right, so I don't, I don't want a system where my water sat um, for too long. So this is why I do it the way we do it here. Right? So we're going to fill this up. Guys, the, the, the distance is tiny. It's very, very small. You're talking probably a few percent. But we'll see if it affects the pH in the tank or not. Right, and... Um, I always like to add, or, or recently I should say, because I've not always done it like this, I like to add some actual um, acid to the tank. So we'll do the one next to here just in, as well while we're, while we're waiting. So this is our exper experimental tank 4.85 and you can see the water is going in here on this one. Now I know for sure this, this tank here the pH is a little bit higher because it is a um, Akadama tank. And I think that the lowest I've had Akadama is maybe a bit of five, but this tank was very old. I think this is the oldest tank in my room for being set up. It's years old. But the reason I haven't changed it yet, guys, is because, yeah, I have lots and lots of baby shrimp. There's like hundreds of little baby shrimp all over the glass on each side. You can probably see them over the leaves here as well. 
So I don't want to change something that is clearly working, but at the same time, the pH in this tank has risen um, enough for me to think that I should be changing it. But as long as there's still baby shrimp, I won't change it. But um, I want to try and acid adjust the tank a little bit, just to make it last a little bit longer. And you know, if you think in theory, that if you acid adjust all the water that goes into the tank, nothing really ever is stripped. All right. So this is probably a very good practice to do if you are doing larger water changes, for example, acid treat your reverse osmosis water before you pump it back into the tank. And when you do it guys, remember, there's always a buffer bounce type period from when you add the acid, right, so it will drop significantly and then it will bounce up as it settles. Right, so that is what you do with your RO water in your container. It's almost the same in here, but you're not going to add so much acid into the tank that that is an issue. Right? Because you don't want massive drops and massive bounces and all that stuff. So for this guys, right, for this, for just little water changes like this, I take my oak extract here. This is another tip I got from Raymond, by the way. If you think I'm talking about Raymond an awful lot because um, it is because basically he gave me loads and loads of tips. So th these were a few of them, right, and I want to share all this stuff that I've learned from people over onto my channel, right? So let's get this open, this child lock thing. And yeah, we are going to use a little pipette here. And guys, remember what I said, don't fill this up so much that you're going to have mils, milliliters, and like five mil, three mil, or anything like that on this while you're doing this, because it's very easy to put too much in. Okay, so. All you're going to do is just suck up enough like this. So this is far too much because all we need, guys, is drops. See the drops? And you think, Mark, that doesn't seem like very much. It, trust me, you can you can actually drop the pH in a tank quite a lot with just a little amount of stuff if the pH is already reasonably low. And so you see what I mean here? Look how much is in this little pipet here. It's barely even two drops in it. Two drops. Okay, so we're going to put it where the water is going in here. One, two, that was barely even two. Put another one. Yeah, that was the same. Barely even two, right? And that's all we need to do. And this will manage our pH in our system. Right, and I haven't, I don't think I've ever spoken about this on camera because, guys, I'm not very, very sure about it. Let me just change the angle a bit so we're not looking at the same thing all the time. I'm not mega, mega sure about this, guys, but I do believe that there is a thing called egg calcification in bee shrimp, right? That it makes sense that that would apply to bee shrimp because it happens in soft water fish like discus that you get a thing called egg calcification, which is basically the calcium in the water if the water is harder it leaves the water and it gets stuck to the outer shell of the egg, right? it attaches, basically calcifies the egg. My god, I actually said that right? Calcifies the egg, right, and it makes it so that the structure of the egg is a little bit thicker than it should be, and therefore the, the young, when it comes for them to be hatched, they struggle, right? And you can basically get a, a, a shrimplet or a fish egg or something like that, struggle to get out of its, of its shell and it will die inside the egg, right? So I believe that this is a thing with soft water bee shrimp because it makes sense. Our survival rates in hard water, uh, when you keep soft water bee shrimp in hard water, is the survival rate of the young is very low. But it's only when you start to lower the pH that you start to see better results with breeding. So it makes sense that there is egg calcification in bee shrimp. Right, guys, I, I've tried to Google search this and see if I can find research papers and stuff on it, and I can't find anything at all. I only see the odd thing mentioned in discus with uh, egg calcification. So my thinking is this, right? If, if we can start to manage our pH and our systems just a little bit better, then we might have more and more and more success breeding soft water shrimp. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. You know, guys, I've just realized that us talking about that stuff, I was going to get, show you this tank as an example, but it's not a good tank to show you because the pH is already very low, which means we're not actually going to add any acid to it. So let's try the next tank here. We've, all, we've already added acid to this one. 
let's uh, put our probe into the next one here. <laughs> see guys, my brain sometimes, brain farting is the worst thing when you get older. So we'll see what this goes to here. We've already added like two drops into this, but we can, we can still add more if we can uh, see what the pH is. If, if, it's, if it's over 5.8, we can add more. If it's below 5.5, as an example, we don't add anything at all. Right, so this one is looking okay so far. We need, guys, the thing with pH when you're measuring it is you need to give it time. Like when you put your probe in, don't just judge it on the first number because it doesn't work like that with pH pens and pH monitors. Um, and the documentation of this one, for example, this Milwaukee one, it says on it that you can, uh, you're best to give it like a minute for it to settle. And I, I see that as well in the numbers. If the numbers are increasing, going up and up and up, Right, don't take a don't take a reading as it's gone up because your reading will just be wrong. Right, let, let it settle first, and when you start to get to numbers where you see it going past the number and then it might drop a little bit again, then you know you're in the ballpark. Right? So you just have to give it time. Let's uh, wait and see what happens. All right, guys, what do you think? Are they a fan of new leaves? I think they are. I think they are. So, as I said, these are walnut leaves. I actually really love oak leaves as well, but I don't have any this time of year. But, um, let me, guys, let me know in the comment section below what leaves you find the best. Right? I, I like walnut leaves. I just, I just see it that the shrimp destroy them super fast, but that might be anecdotal because it could be that things like Indian almond leaves are just thicker, so they take longer to be uh, munched down on, degraded. So let, let me know in the comment section below what are your favourite leaves in a tank. And by the way guys as well, I like uh, walnut leaves so much so that we're actually going to grow some walnut trees here. Uh, so you have that to look forward to as well. I'll maybe get that in this video by uh, the end of the week. We'll actually try and germinate some walnuts and we'll see if we can get them to... I built a survive in here in Norway. I have seen it on Facebook where there are pages of people in Norway that actually do keep walnut trees in Norway, so I know that they can live here. Um, and I think the biggest hurdle will probably be actually getting them to live past the first year in the winter in Norway because yeah, it gets very, very cold here. And we'll have to figure out a way to actually protect them from the moose and the deer and stuff in the winter because yeah, all the moose and the deer here in the winter, in case you didn't know, they actually love to munch down on all the little new growth on plants and so yeah let's go back over to our ph testing and we'll see where we're at all right guys we have a baseline of about 6.3 right and it's probably going to go up as we're sitting here but remember what i said you have just just have to be patient and weigh on it well that's what you have to do right so it's about 6.3 let's uh, zoom around and we'll have a look at the shrimp while we talk about this we get that cable out of the way mark so that people can see the shrimplets and what we're going to do here guys is we're actually just going to add some more acid to this tank 6.3 is higher than what I want it to be so let's have a little look up here and remember what I said remember right you only want to put in a few drops of this stuff at a time measure it right and then wait guys what I do is I like to wait a few days if I can get this bloody child lock off are you kidding me I like to wait a few days, right? So you're only going to put in a few drops. There's the water over here. Let's try three because the pH in this is quite high. 6.3 is high, in my opinion. One, two, three, right? And you don't want to go berserk with this stuff in the tank. You don't want to drop the pH way down to like four or you'll, you will start to see dead shrimp. Okay, so just uh, relax, chillax, watch your shrimp. And you can see here as well, guys, why I'm not, I don't really want to change this tank quite yet. Because there is just so many baby shrimp in here. There's so many, I don't know if you can see it up on the glass. Maybe not, not on that side. But there's so many crystals in here. And I can see so many small ones as well. Let's have a little look on the glass at the side. It's normally on the glass is a good place to see them. All the babies. Right, and yeah, 
I can tell this tank is quite healthy. I can see better girls. So we're not looking to change something that isn't broken, are we guys? I'm not sure if that's even in focus, but um, I thought I'd show you down here just to try and... I don't think that's in focus. I think this, these leaves are in focus. Let me, let me know what you see. Yeah, but I can see buried shrimp and stuff, so... Let's uh, wait and we'll see if that changed the pH at all. Because it probably didn't. But if you're adding new water to a tank... Look at that girl there, look. If you're adding new water to the tank... It doesn't do any harm when you're adding a few drops of acid as well. Is she I think she's buried. I think she might be actually having her babies right there. Look at her. Isn't she a big, nice girl? Yeah, she's definitely having her babies. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So yeah, you want to adjust your pH as well. I remember what I said, guys. This is oak extract. It's not as strong as the other stuff, right? So... Don't go firing in pH down and stuff into your tanks. Just use the weaker stuff in the beginning. Alright guys, so I actually know for sure in my room that nearly all of my tanks are within my parameters that I set before. So that's between 5.5 and 5.8 as the, as the higher limit rate. And I know there is only two tanks in this room that are not that because yeah, I've already tested all this stuff. Right, so this was one of them, this tank here, the one that we did, tested before, it was 6.37. And the only other one that is higher in this room is the one up there as well. So it's probably a good one for us to test, but I thought we would quickly show you the pHs in some of these other tanks while we're here. Just to give you an idea of the pHs that I keep my bee shrimp in, in my room. Alright? And that's an awesome little idea from Raymond, look move this along because yeah I don't know why they put the, the part to actually hang this on on the wrong end because I read from this way not, not upside down so let's put you here and yeah we'll have a look at this in a minute you can see already how, how fast the pH is dropping here 5.6, 5.2, 5.1 and so this one is nice and settled and low this one <gasps> guys I think we have our first buried boa. Possibly. Yeah, we'll have to come back and look at this tank, I think. Let's have a little look at the goldens, because I was sitting here looking at the goldens as well, and they're just absolutely gorgeous too. Gorgeous goldens. Now all these cables, Mark, what are you doing with your life? Now that, I think one of these boas is buried. Let's have a little look. We have to top up these tanks. Let's, uh, let's top them up. Let's top them up and have a look at each tank as we go along. So this one's full enough, this one here. Let's quickly just open it like this. You can see how fast the water flows out, guys. Like this. But we're going to do the same thing again. I'm only going to add a few drops. And this is just to compensate for any acid difference in the new water that's going in. One, two, that's it. Alright, does that make sense? I'm only compensating for the... Yeah, you get, you get what I'm saying. Let me bring you over here more. We'll have a look at this tank too here. Oh, that girl is so nice. Yeah, I think a lot of the babies that we put in here before have actually grown up. Let's have a little look. Alright, isn't this tank looking good? Let's see, where's the bird? There's the bird girl right there. You see her, the wee dark spot on her belly. I've been coming in eagerly into this room looking for baby shrimp every other day because yeah I've seen I've seen berry shrimp in here for a little while and this is kind of a newer tank as well and you know what it's like guys I'm eager to see these because um, baby goldens are so nice to look at because they're like pure white you imagine like tiny little grains of rice everywhere in the tank yeah that's basically what it's like in here and yeah they're one of my favorite shrimp Look at that girl there. I think we might be able to zoom in. Can we zoom in? Oh, if I zoom in too far, it goes out of focus. It's the type of lens that's on here. That might be good enough for you guys to see. I hope. Alright guys, this is one of the boa tanks that I have. And yeah, 
with the girl that I was saying is buried there, because these shrimp are very new in my shrimp room. Uh, she's actually behind that leaf there. It's very hard for me to see her. But, um, yeah. The pH in this tank, what is it? Let's have a little look. 5.34, something like that. It's very low. I don't know if it's this if this one's the one that's buried, but one of them was buried, I just saw it. Looking good. Alright, shrimpless. Now that we've explained what we're doing with these tanks, topping them up, pHing, adjusting a tiny little bit, let's go over to our reverse osmosis container and see what we've been doing with the stronger stuff, right? Because I've been writing it down. What I've been doing since uh, a couple of days and it'll be interesting to see what the results are because I added a little bit more of this acid today, so you will see what the bounce rate is after bounce rate, the bounce is after we do this. Let's have a look. Alright guys, so I've been doing this since uh, yesterday. I've been writing down my uh, times. Times I've actually uh, dosed this acid and the pH. This was before, then I dosed on the conductivity because I also I wanted to measure the conductivity because I wanted to see if the acid actually um, change the conductivity at all because I, I, I think acid will be taking something away from the tank that's what allows us to actually drop the pH even more I'm not sure does that even make sense maybe not but we'll see, see right so uh, yesterday I did 1 mil pH down right and it was 6.61 and then by that time in the afternoon later so it was 10 a.m. six hours later it was 6.42 right so then the next day today um, it was 6.21, right? So you can see the drop with us doing one mil, right? And I know for sure that there will, there will be a bounce rate with this, guys, and this is still too high, so I added five mil, right? So this is 100 litres of water. It's in this container, roughly. It's about half the barrel. And it's only been... I didn't write the time on here, but it was this morning. Let me just quickly write this down. It was about nine o'clock this morning. And we're going to take a fresh reading right now, which is, uh, I think it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Right, so we're going to measure the pH and the conductivity. Let me just put the, yeah, I won't need to add the date here, but you'll see here. We're going to have a fresh wee box here. Right? So let's move this out the way. And let's uh, quickly measure our conductivity to see if anything changed at all. It actually did, did change. It actually went. It actually went. Oh, I turned it off. One second, guys. It actually went up the way, which is interesting. So it was at three o six. It is now at three two nine. So it did go up. But right, let me quickly grab. I'm going to write that down. What was it? Three two nine. Um, we're going to measure the pH because I want to see if there is, is if there is any bounce tomorrow. There will be, that's why this pH. Don't be shocked at how low this looks, guys, when you see it. Don't be shocked. Right, so let's plop it in. And we're going to give that a minute to settle. Yeah, it's already very low. It's, it's almost like four, something like that. Don't be shocked at how low this is because remember, guys, we're talking about this... Uh, the acid will rebound over the next few days and then it'll come up again. And I want to get this on record so you guys can see what it is we're actually doing here. So the goal is, as I said, uh, between 5.5 and 5.8. And so that's 4.10. Hopefully you can see that, 4.10. So that is quite the drop from 6.21 to 4.10 with 5 mil. Now keep in mind, there's going to be a rebound, right? So we want this rebound to be at least a whole 1 pH. 4.1. Right, and we'll come back. It will either be tomorrow or the next day, but it will be in this week's video. I want to show you guys the, the bounce. All right. Let's get back over there. All right, so there's not much else for me to do today, but I thought we would uh, go over the, those things that we talked about. And there was one other thing I wanted to talk about as well, guys. I, I think I need something. Remember we said 
I needed to add something so we knew it was a different day. How about instead of instead of me writing the date because I, I always forget which day it is and date and all that rubbish and, and um, I probably even put the wrong dates in that paperwork that we did before. Um, but I need something that's visual in the video so that you guys can see that there is an actual change. So it's maybe thinking, maybe I was going to say like a nighttime scene or something. You guys know what I mean. I need some. I need some kind of transition from now to the next day, so you know that there is a next day. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I'll try and I'll try and think of like a moon coming up or going across the screen or something like that. Right? I, I'll I'll think of something. But um, yeah, so we have uh, that stuff to monitor. We'll monitor that over the next few days, which you will see in this video, as I mentioned. And guys, I think we should start to deal with this tank outside. I don't want to do it. I hate rebuilding tanks. It doesn't even take that long. But um, I, I always get a little bit, um, not scared, but I'm always very cautious with doing tanks and stuff because yeah, that's prime time for my back to explode. And I don't want my guts and stuff to go all over the screen. And whatever else but I tell you what guys I'm so so happy with the progress my shrimp tanks are making all of them all of them are breeding they're all breeding they all have loads of babies or they're going to have loads of babies which is an important thing so it shows you you're never too old to learn new tricks as people would say with dogs you're never too old yeah you guys know what I mean uh, maybe I will learn to talk one day properly in my videos but hey ho Let's say, see what tomorrow brings. One moment for you, let's go. Well, hello there, shrimp farm. It's another day, another dollar, as I say, or in my case, another coffee, right? So we have a few things planned for today. I'm actually gonna share some tips with you, and we're actually gonna start a little project with uh, growing a walnut tree outside, because you guys would have saw yesterday that I love walnut leaves, and I would like to just have a walnut tree in my garden, right? So. Um, I'm going to give you some tips on um, fertilizing a tank with shrimp in it uh, with new soil. Right, I'm going to show you how to do that as well because I've actually done it in a lot of my tanks here and you just simply can't see it. And we're also going to actually move some of my red zebra type pintos, red fancy uh, shrimp up here from that tank because they're mixed in with black ones. And we're going to put them in their own tank. So we're going to have two different types of fancy shrimp in our shrimp room they're gonna it's gonna look good guys it's gonna look good right so but the first job right is this little fella it is a little walnut right so i got some of these from the market i'm gonna try one first if it works it works if it doesn't work it doesn't work but the first step guys to us growing a walnut tree is to prepare the seed and yeah i've uh, tried to watch quite a few videos on how to do this so it, it doesn't seem that hard the success rate is about 50 percent. so maybe i should have bought a couple of these instead of just getting one but um yeah let's give this a try so the first thing that you need to do here is you need to remove the point there needs to be some kind of hole like we can drill a hole or you can do what i've seen a lot of people doing videos and stuff is kind of like just get yourself a little pair of pliers or something like that and we're going to try and, and uh, drink more coffee mm. we're going to try and just break open the top a little bit here so i don't know how how hard this is going to be Let's see if it's impossible oh nearly into my finger if it's impossible which it seems like it's going to be we might actually have to drill a wee hole yeah when you watch on youtube videos this kind of stuff it it just seems they seem to make it look so much easier than what it actually is yeah because there's no way i'm breaking this with these <laughs> let's see we'll try a different set and you guys will have noticed i've cut my hair really short So that is how, yeah, I did actually cut myself, look. Tiny wee bit of blood. Let's see, let's try these little set of pliers. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be as hard as that, but the walnuts are hard for a reason. All right, so what can we do here? Right, so maybe I need to try and carefully drill a hole in this. Let me ju just let me go and find something for it. Right guys, so I thought, why don't we try and carefully drill a hole in it? It seems to be like it's going to be the easiest way for us to do it. So I have my tap and drill set and whatever here. Hmm. And I wonder if this is going to be enough. All we basically need guys is a starter hole. So yeah, let's get our little drill. 
and I don't know how advisable this is to do in your hand because as you've seen before I've cut my finger a little bit let's see, I just need a little hole try and get a little bit closer maybe not a good idea You know the only thing I'm worried about with this is that once I get through this little thing that I'm actually going to damage the end and this is turning out to be a little bit harder than I thought I wonder if a slight tap of the hammer on the end will break it or I don't want to destroy the walnut I don't want to go off what I've seen other people do but when they did it they were just using pliers and stuff so Hmm. Tough decisions. Decision decisions. I wonder if we could use our tap drill bit in here. What do you think? Hmm. I think I might try and just give the top end a gentle tap just to make maybe break this top part here. I'll be right back and see if I can do it. Alright guys, so I started tapping the end and it was getting somewhere until this seed kind of broke in half but um, when I'm looking at the walnut inside I'm not sure if walnuts are in two parts or four parts but I think one of them is intact so I'm just going to put the case like this into some water like that and we're just going to leave it like this for 24 hours and then I'm going to actually put it in a box in, in somewhere dark and we're going to see if it germinates right so Remember this date because this is the one of the plants that we're hopefully going to put into our garden to make a walnut tree. Right, so the other thing guys, because yeah, that wasn't a very successful start to the show, breaking the seed before we even do anything. The other thing guys is I often add uh, more soil to my tanks if the pH is struggling. Yeah, and sometimes it's very visible in a tank if something is struggling because you'll see a difference in the plants. And what I mean by that is a lot of the time with active soils they will be nutrient high in the beginning and then the nutrient value will get less and less and less and less and less and less over time right so uh, soils that are nutrient deficient from the start are very bad for this thing right? so this is a way I've come up come up with to actually deal with this and it's simple you get yourself a jar get yourself little containers fill them with your favorite active soil and place some of different parts in the tank right and I've actually done it in um, all of my tanks that have struggled in the past like this one over here for example you just can't see um, the plants were yellow this one was very yellow you go back of maybe maybe two two months something like that it was very yellow I've actually added it a little I wonder if I can show you actually because it's better if I can show you stuff than me just rambling on in it so I'm going to lift this up if I can find it with my hands way down there even now I can feel it let's tip some water and I want to show you this guys because I want to show you how easy it is to do look this is one that's actually in the tank and this one is a very good example because uh, this tank was very very yellow and it was basically because um, if you have too much algae in a tank right what happens is the algae grows like mad and eventually if you don't deal with algae if you don't put shrimp in and whatever else the algae will deplete the nutrients in the water and eventually it will also go yellow so that is what happened to this one it went yellow before I put the shrimp in the tank so we've added more soil to the tank that you saw me take out there and yeah all the plants have went green again any single tank that I have had that issue in or, or I will have issues like that in the, in the future all I'm doing is adding some soil to a little container like this let me pan you down you can look at my beautiful face don't I look gorgeous today guys with my bald head <laughs> let me pan you down here so you can at least see the glass because yeah we are actually going to add this to our tank today because our tank up in that corner up there the crystal tank yeah I noticed the plant is starting to go yellow but it's also one of the ones where the pH is a little bit higher right so we, we should deal with it now there's baby shrimp in the tank 
And I thought I would, guys, I would just show you this way of doing it because yeah, this saves you a lot of hassle. Let's see. So this is ADA V1. It's well known for being very nutrient rich. Almost to the point where it's a problem. In some cases, when you're starting up a tank, it can be so full of nutrients that you get masses and masses of algae. And then the cycle time is very, very high. So that's all it is, guys, that we do, is put a glass like this into our tank. Right, so let's do that now. All right, guys, let's see how close we can get you here. I'm trying to get you on the shelf as close as I can, but yeah, there's so much stuff in the way, plants and whatever else. Let's see, let's move that out of the way. And yeah, let's put our soil in here. Let's see, can we zoom in a little bit? Or you guys, that's better, isn't it? Okay, so we here we have our soil, and this is um, Akadama, this soil that's in here. And it's, this is also notorious for being very nutrient poor, this type of soil. Right? So often when you put plants in with Akadama, the plants will actually struggle a little bit. So it's always a good idea to add some something that's nutrient rich, like Amazonia, somewhere in the tank, right? And yeah, the thing I love about this, guys, is because we're using little jars like this. Hopefully I don't drop it. Because we're using little jars like this, right, so the next time that you look into this tank and you start to see something and the plants, for example, that are starting to yellow, then you, all you have to do is pick up the jar like I showed you in the, the previous clip and replace the soil. Right, just make sure, just turn it around and have a little look and make sure there's no baby shrimp in it. And you can actually do it like that. Is my bald head getting in the way there? I can't see. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not going to kill any baby shrimp when I'm putting it down. So right in the middle is fine. Because I want it to be on show. How about that? You see what I mean? This is very easy to do. Right guys, this is the tank next to the one we were just looking at right hand. I said to you guys the other day that uh, there was a lot of baby shrimp in here and we should put in more leaves because yeah I could see that there was many baby shrimp so I think what we're going to add in here today as well is more leaves as well because th there isn't really enough leaves in here for my liking and uh, yeah let's do that now you know I was about to change lines there and I saw this really really blue really here look at that isn't that cool I thought you'd like to see it so this is from Painted Fire Reds. Isn't that cool? Alright guys. I um, soaked more leaves yesterday off camera. And I'm just going to put them, you know, like a lot of them in each tank. Because yeah, we don't have enough. And um, some of the tanks are just super bare like this one. So I'm going to make sure that we put enough into each tank. Because yeah, this is really, really important in a shrimp tank. If you don't have a lot of this in the tank, then your shrimp will struggle to breed. And it is that simple to explain. Your shrimp will basically struggle to breed. Because, you know, the, as these break down, microorganisms and stuff feed in them, and then that is food for your baby shrimp. Right? Does it make sense? Some of my tanks, I don't think I have any leaves near the bark. I'm just going to throw stuff in. Like this one that we, we did the other day. There's a real lack of leaves in it. Oh, nearly fell over. It's got loads of leaves in all these types. Now this one has a lot of baby shrimp in it. I tried to show you there, but that camera that I have for doing this just doesn't do it justice. You know, I mean my vision is poor, but I can see that there's much more shrimp than what I'm actually able to show you with the crappy cameras that I use. Alright, so that's probably enough for today. And uh, yeah, let's get onto this next tank up here because we are actually going to feed this tank up here and we're going to actually start to move some shrimp to another tank. And let me show you how I go about deciding if a tank's good enough to move shrimp to. Let's do it. Alright Shrimplets, we are going to do some basic testing first right? because I want to show you that it's, that it's important that you test stuff before you just chuck shrimp into tanks. Right? So we have our 
pH meter here and it's going to read our pH. Let me see, can you see it from that distance? If not, I will tell you what it is. Because it's important that when you move shrimp from tank to tank, like we're about to do, that there's no massive, massive differences. Right, so in this tank here, the pH is 5.59, just say 5.6. Right? So let's go down to our other tank over here. Right, and we're going to see what the pH is of this one, right? And we're going to leave it a minute just for it to settle. So we get a very, very accurate reading, right? But what we're going to do as well is we're also going to match as close as we can our TDS. Right, and this is just important if you're moving shrimp from tank to tank, right, without drip acclimation. So let's see, what is this? Two hundred and eighty-three, right? So let's go back over here, and we'll see what this one is. Two hundred and eighty-three. Remember, two hundred and eighty-three. Two hundred ninety-one. Two hundred ninety-one. Right, so the conductivity, I said TDS before, the conductivity is very, very similar. Let's have a little look at our pH. What was it in this tank? 5.59? I don't think there is a hold on this, fun on this thing. But you guys, you're going to have to take my word for it. It's 5.63. Right, so it's very, very close. It's, it's very, very small, the difference. It's less than 0 0.1 difference. Right? So our shrimp can go directly from that tank up there with the net or the jug or whatever we would do into this tank. Right? But one other thing that we must measure because this is a new tank is I want to measure for ammonia. I'm using for this, I'm using a Sarah test kit. We're also going to need... We need a syringe or something for us to transfer our water. So there's our rejects. Let's see, do we have a little syringy thing in the jig in here? We do. Right, so it's important to note, guys, because I've made this mistake a lot in the past, and that is when you use a Sera ammonia test kit, the water volume is 10 mil, not 5 mil, like you would normally do in other API type test and whatever. I think there's just five mil. Right, so what you want to do is you want to rinse your regent like this. Rinse your container that your all your regent and water is going to go in. Give it a good rinse. Now I'm just going to put it into this little container here. Right, and then we're going to fill this up to 10 mil. And I'm going to show you something guys that's quite important that, I th that you should also do, right? 10 mil we said, right? So what you're going to do is, when you're filling up, I'm not sure how this is going to come out in camera. Maybe I have to have a level to show you this part. Right, you see the, you see the numbers on here? Right, what you should do is, there's a curvature caused by surface tension on that level that you see here, right? When you're adding water, go by the bottom of the curvature, not the middle or the top, because that's just air. It's just an air, air gap, right? So it's very hard for me to do on camera. I'll try and get down here to show you guys. Put your water in. Oh, yeah, I've got my back. It's until the bottom of the curve is in line with your little thing, right? And that's how you put your stuff in. It's very important that you do this properly right, because I've done it wrong for years and then I thought, wait a minute, we're on, I'm not putting enough water in. Anyway, right, let's get our regents done. We're just going to give these a gentle shake for about 10 seconds and then we're going to add them to our container. Right? And why I use Sarah over API for this is because um, it's an instant result with the Sarah test kit. 
Okay, so it's an instant reading, which I like because uh, as someone that is visually impaired, being able to see the difference in color straight away is very, very important for me. So you can see here, guys, pardon me, that I have my color set up here. Once I put all my regions in, I'm going to give them a little stir like this. And then I'm going to place it in front of my colors like this. And whichever one I think is the closest to the closest color is going to be the reading, right? And I know it's very, very, very hard for you guys to see because it, normally it's, just, it's impossible for me, see, for me to see as well. But let's say, uh, guys, let's turn that light on above us as well because I find that that helps me a lot if we have decent light above. One second. And then we're going to start to add our regions, right? So you start from one and it's six drops. C, this one is tough. One, two, three, four, five, six. And guys, the reason I'm measuring for ammonia is because yeah, I'm not 100% sure I was, I was uh, correct in my assumption in saying the ammonium isn't as toxic as ammonia to shrimp and the reason I'm saying it guys is because I think that it's possible that even low amounts over time are dangerous to shrimp so that, that's what I'm saying that's why I think it's better to cycle a tank properly and make sure that you don't have any ammonia or ammonium in the tank instead of rushing and putting your stuff right so let's do this so six drops again one two three four five six you're going to give this a little stir like this this helps mix the regents and then the last one do you get what i'm saying guys about my me possibly being wrong before but saying i know ammonia is less harmful I'm at a low pH, but is it completely harmless? That's what I'm saying. I, I'm, make, I'm probably wrong with that. So from now on, what I tend to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. What I tend to do is edge on the cautious side and make sure that my tanks are fully cycled. All right, so going by this, what I see instantly is yellow. It's just yellow. It's the most yellow I think I've ever seen in any test. Right, so there is no ammonia. That means it's 100% safe for us to put our shrimp in. Let me just have a little look at the date. It is the 1st of the 4th. So this tank is, what is it guys, five... What, we're halfway through this month? So what is it? About six weeks cycled, something like that. No ammonia, looks good. And uh, yeah, our shrimp are good to go. Let me just lift this up a little bit and we'll try and get it against the paper so you can see as well because some of you might have noticed that my lighting is a little bit better in my room today. I put a light behind the camera. So let's lift you up just to try and get a comparison. It's important guys when you do this that you go on your first instinct when you see the colour. Right, so here you can see that it's yellow. To me, I mean, I have uh, I have different lenses in each eye because I have a plastic lens in one of my eyes, so I actually do see different colors with both eyes, but make sure that you have no green like this or anywhere up here, right? So if you do get this, guys, what I recommend you doing is an 80% water change. Yes, you heard that right, 80%. You want to get as much of that ammonia out as possible, fill it back up, right? And then you would wait probably a week again and then test again to see if it's safe for your shrimp, right? So that's what I would do. Very simple, I thought I'd show you this as well because it's just stuff that you should know. Right, so I have a little drawer here with all my stuff. Put my glass back in. Put my white paper and stuff. I never mentioned that as well, did I? But it's always good to read your results with the white background. So that's why I have that white piece of A4 paper. It's also inside a plastic wrap so it never really gets destroyed. And Guys, I'm showing you this here because um, I went through this the other day, this drawer, and I had tests tests from 2017 in here, old API ones and stuff. So I threw away a lot of stuff yesterday, nitrate test kits, nitrate test kits, and stuff that was, that was 
some of it was like five, six years out of date. So, yeah, if you have test kits, go through your stuff every so often because I do believe it makes quite a difference if you have fresh test kits or old ones in the results. All right, so yeah, keep that in mind when you do this. All right, guys, it's probably the best angle I can get for you guys to see this little individual part of the tank here. Right? So as I said, what we're looking for here is red shrimp. And I'm going to place a piece of food in. I'm going to actually move some of this stuff around a little bit as well, just to help you guys see. A wee bit easier because yeah, I know sometimes like my filming and stuff is like horrifically bad. <laughs> so let's see if we can tuck that in there. And yeah, we'll see if we can just move around some things here just for a minute before we put the food in, just so you guys can see shrimp just that wee bit easier mark. See this uh, sponge filter is off the wall. Let's get you over here. Yeah, and this, uh, this moss is already stuck to the glass. <laughs> the stuff that we put in before. And I'm just simply going to move some of this leaf litter out the way just a little bit. So, we, so it's just a little bit easier for us to grab our red shrimp. Oh, there's so many in here. So I think with a little bit of luck, guys, yeah, I can tell already. We're going we're gonna to get probably a good 10 red ones out of here. Some of them look just like crystals, but it's a, big, it's a beginning. It's a new beginning. Some of them are really gorgeous as well. See, like that, there's one there that's just, just definitely a call, this little red one. Look at that. Oh, that one's so gorgeous. You see what I mean? How we need to do things here. Guys, let me just uh, zoom in. Wait a minute. You see that there? What's that there? Just ignore my pink hammer. It's actually my daughter. She has a little toolkit that she uses sometimes. That she got from a friend. Let's uh, put some water in for our little container that we're going to use to transfer the shrimp. It doesn't have to be loads, but I like to put enough in that the, the net is going to be submerged. Did we just catch a shrimp? What colour is it? It's black. <laughs> Alright, so there's one red shrimp in here that will stay here because she is a very big female girl and she basically is the mother of the tank. And as long as she keeps on breeding she can stay in there and we'll just remove some of the red ones every so often. Alright, so there is the plan. There is the plan. Where did I put the food? It's over here somewhere. I'm going to put the food somewhere in this corner here and then the shrimp will all come here as well. Alright, let's see where did I put that net because there's already some red ones here that we can grab. A net like this. Give it a little sugar, get all their bubbles off. And let's start catching them. Two, two beautiful red ones straight off the bat, look. Aren't they gorgeous? Let's see, we're going to take our time with this. So it's two. And I can see there, guys, as well, that you are looking at this wood here. I, wonder, I can't really make the camera go lower. Can I make you go up a little bit? Yeah, that's a little bit better. It's a wee bit better. It's never going to be perfect in a Mark Trim tank room. There's a little one that looks like a crystal. We have no red ones left, guys, from our previous tank, so this is why we're doing this. My colonies, my red fancy tigers and my black fancy tigers, they basically went down to like three shrimp. And yeah, we have recovered them all from that. All the shrimp you see in this tank have, have become from those three shrimp. So we have a colony of black ones here and we have a grow out tank. Oh, look at that little baby there. You see it here? On the glass. Oh, there's another one as well. I was just thinking the other day when I watched this that there was not really any baby shrimp and it's not until you get into the tank and look that you actually start to see everything. Right, so I don't want to catch all the baby shrimp that are in here. They're really, really small, like newborns, little micro shrimps. One red one here. And it will be quite happy if we get about 10 red ones out of this and then we can start a red colony up again. If you're asking why or what happened to your red colonies, 
Well, guys, it's the same old thing. Same old thing. Mark uh, overfeeding the tanks. You guys have all been in the same position. Scratching my head, wondering why the shrimp's not coming to the food, and wondering why my shrimp are dying. And it's just, you know, I, I talked about it in a recent video where I was saying yeah, it's, it's people that kill the shrimp. It's not, it's not just uh, something else. It's the actual, you putting too much food into the tank is what kills shrimp. Right, so you want adequate filtration, lots of leaves, and uh, you just have to keep an eye on your feeding like a hawk. Right, and I was saying to you guys as well that I went down to feeding once. I th actually think maybe once isn't enough now. Once a week because yeah, my, my shrimp are like mega, mega active guys. So if, if, you can, if you can go up a level to twice a week and your shrimp are still mega active and you're watching your shrimp like a hawk, then it stands to reason that they will breed more as well. It stands to reason. Let me see. See, we, you can probably see this here. There's one big, really big red mama there. Big red mama. Yeah, there's lo so many little babies in the moss. One red one away at the back here. Look at this guy. Oh, let's see. You see it? It's really, really nice looking. Really nice looking. So I can see one male away over here at the bark, a red one. And when I'm doing this guys as well, I'm looking for buried girls, I'm looking for signs in the tank. We measured the pH, remember? So we're looking for signs that the tank is healthy. All the moss is grown. I can see baby shrimp all over that sponge. We measured our conductivity or TDS, whatever you want to use. I use conductivity. Um, it was good. Conductivity, guys, doesn't matter as much as we think it does. I know people that keep uh, very, very good shrimp at very, very high conductivity levels that don't do water changes at all. So conductivity in TDS doesn't matter as much as we think it does, but it matters for making water. So that's as, as, far, as, as, as far as I would go with it. As saying as how much it marks. See the, did you see the red one there? It's behind the leaf for you guys. One more red one. We've got, well, let me see, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight in that container there. We've got a red one there under that leaf. It wants to go back, look, it's going back on itself. It doesn't matter if we don't get all the red ones all at once, but. but this is one of the older red ones actually. He's playing a little bit of hardball here. There you go. So there is nine, nine red ones. We're going to leave that big male, big female in there. I'm just going to quickly have a look around the rest of the tank to see if we can actually see anything else. Can you see anything from that side? God, this, this little shrimp doesn't want to come out. Alright, let's see. I'm just going to quickly... Oh, there's another red one coming. Here. That's a really nice one as well. See it? Lovely little red one. And so we have our own colony starting already. So it's more than enough to start a colony. There's at least 10 shrimp in there now. And when you add new shrimp to a tank, what normally happens is they will molt grow bigger and then the sexy behaviour starts. So I'm just going to have a look guys around this side to see if we can actually see anything else around here. All I see is baby shrimp. There's one red one away at the very very back over here. It's like sitting under the filter. Right, so I'm not going to worry too much about one shrimp. It just means that the next time we'll be able to, for this tank specifically guys, there was nothing wrong with me actually netting the shrimp out of the tank and placing them into the other tank, right? But it's, the, what I'm doing here now is just for you guys, so you can see, look. So this is our shrimp. These are the ones that we have, uh, red ones that are gonna go in the other tank. They are really, really nice actually. Some, there's, I think there's at least three of them that look like just crystals. But the rest of them are like, look like they could be 
a high quality one. So this is the thing I love about doing this is is, is you're able to do some breathing through it. Right? So Mark, enough blabbering, let's get over here and we'll actually add them to the tank. Alright, little triplets. Let's get these in here. Oh my back. I was doing so well until the last minute there. <laughs> Let's get these guys in here. I'm going to hold them in front of the camera just for a minute because I know my filming is like the worst ever, so it's very random if something <laughs> will be in focus. But hopefully you guys can see that there's like 10 fancy crystal reds in there. Fancy red tigers, whatever way you want to call them. Maybe you will see them when we put them in there. Let me see in the camera. Possibly. Possibly, Mark. Right, so I'm just going to gently tip these out. And we're going to see them going down. It's always exciting to see a new colony start like this. And there's there's very good ones in here as well, right? So it's it's uh We're gonna be able to do something with this tank. Awesome. I love it guys, I love shrimp keeping. Like the video or hit the like button if uh, you love it as well. Let's just let me quickly rinse this out. But that was a little test. If the if the like button glows up, then uh that test just worked. Alright, let me see if I can capture some of them for you from this angle. And so they're actually all spreading out already all over the tank, but you can see how healthy this tank looks. With the moss. You see it? They're looking good. Let me zoom in a little bit. That's about as good as I'm going to get, I think. A little bit of signs there in that little ceramic ring. Look how small it is. So things like this moss here that you see here in the bark, I have noticed Particularly the um, tanks when there's, when there's no shrimp grow much more algae than tanks with shrimp right? So that it makes sense doesn't it guys that shrimp graze on everything And it's very noticeable in the tanks that I have upstairs that you'll see in a future video that this is the case Alright, let's get back up there and we'll finish our coffee Alright guys, that was our week number three. I actually have people coming to the house tomorrow and the next day after they're going to be working on my house so i don't think i'll be making any more videos for this week but um if you like to watch more then please do go over here and smack this next one this will be a random video that youtube picks for you to watch next and guys i'll see you next week thank you for watching